Hi, my name is Eric Hayden, and I'd like to invite you to my home where I can answer a few questions about my film, Astronaut, The Last Push. And the biggest one is probably 2001 A Space Odyssey, the most realistic uh, bit of uh, speculative science fiction ever made. And it totally fuels the imagination. And you got the right stuff. This great movie about uh, the, the this the pioneer ship, this, this notion of, of humans doing something that had never been done before. And uh, it's based, you know, obviously on the true story of the Mercury astronauts. Um, and, uh, and I love that movie. It's one of the greatest movies ever made. And uh, also Apollo 13 is a pretty, uh, a pretty uh, real, well, obviously a very realistic story. I mean, it's based on a real event. Um, but uh, this uh, notion of a disaster in space where the astronauts have to fix their, their broken spacecraft and make it home. And obviously that, uh, we borrowed a lot of that true life event. Um, that's probably the most the, the, that that accident in and of itself is probably the, the most that we pulled from uh, for for the story of astronaut blast push this idea of a disaster in space. Um, but the, you know, bring other accidents in space. That's obviously we've never sent a person uh, that has to ride you know so far away in a spacecraft that takes you know, five minutes or longer to be able to communicate with them. So that, a lot of that was speculation on our behalf. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we borrowed some from the, the Apollo 13 story. Also, you know, there's, there's been a fire on the Mir space station and there's been, you know, oxygen troubles on the, on the International Space Station. All these things kind of lend fuel to the imagination as to what would you do if you were, you know, that far away from rescue and nothing else but to depend on but the very little spacecraft that you have around you. And the reality is, yeah, it's a, it's a very realistic map as to how we would get to Europa. Um, my father uh, is a retired engineer from Lockheed Martin, and he did a lot of work on instruments and spacecraft that went to uh, Jupiter, the Galileo probe, and he also worked on the Mars lander and such. And so I was kind of raised in that environment as to, you know, uh, that, that, that you had to, if you're going to talk about science fiction, you got to talk about it in a realistic way. So um, I sought his advice as to how to lay the mission path to Europa and that actual path that the uh, spacecraft Life One takes, where we swing past uh, Venus and then swing past Earth again uh, and then it gets slingshotted all the way out to Jupiter. That's based literally on the exact path that the Galileo probe took to reach Jupiter in the mid 90s. And in fact, the Juno probe that's on the way to Jupiter right now is on a very similar path and will be making its second fly by Earth uh, not long after this interview is done. So that path is very realistic. And then the design of the spacecraft, well, we really wanted something that was grounded in reality and that looked like it was made from parts of different other spacecraft and that it would work together logically, that the entire design was based upon what different parts would do. So the actual um, execution of the landing on Europa uh, was handled in a way that was really well thought out and, and it really dictated the design of the Life One spacecraft, which I'm really proud of. The reality is that Europa has been a fantastic mystery to humans ever since Galileo discovered the moons going around Jupiter. Um, but Europa is special because it's made out of water and that there is a thick sheet of ice that covers the whole planet, but it's presumed that under that sheet of ice is liquid water and that uh, between the heat of the sun and between the radiation coming from Jupiter, that that water under that ice moves. and. Uh, one thing that we know in science is that if you have moving water, you probably have the building blocks for life. So, um, in my opinion, uh, that you know that is that is the greatest, most fertile soil in our known solar system that we should explore. And our idea in the film was that that uh, life is discovered on Europa in a way that's so un, in, in majestic and unrefutable that anyone would want to go to check it out. Well, that's, uh, that's different in every case. I mean, uh, some people are better prepared to deal with an emergency type environment as that. 
and uh, when Michael Forrest loses his partner um, and, uh, and he's left alone in the tiny spacecraft, well, he's an astronaut and he's trained to deal with emergency situations and he's trained to deal with um, uh, things that, that, that most people could never handle. So I think that part of the story is that the first half of, uh, of life in the capsule after the disaster is exactly how he wants it to be. It's, uh, it's planned out, he's following his idea of, I will do everything that I know mathematically how to do to get through this long procedure. And uh, the reality is it doesn't work. And it's that point when things don't work for him the way he wanted them to work, that that starts eating away at his brain because he's a strong guy, but he's got a long way to go before he actually uh, has the, the mental faculty to deal with uh, the emergency at hand and, and how to deal with accepting life in this new, uh, in this new world for him because it's not going to change. Um, and I would say that of all the scientific elements that we try to incorporate into the story, um, the one pure piece of science fiction that we did is we said, well, the guys will be uh, hibernating, they'll be asleep. Um, obviously that hasn't quite been ironed out here on earth as to how we could do that, but that was the concession that we made was that these two guys were supposed to be asleep for most of the journey. So they wouldn't really be expected to be awake and functioning in that capsule for more than a few weeks, uh, right before they arrived at Europa and got prepared to land. So the, <clears throat> the idea that they would be in that space capsule for, for many years at a time waiting for something to happen, uh, they, you know, they didn't plan for that. But uh, both of these guys, I think they could handle it. Um, it just uh, it would require a lot of special behavior on their half. And, and when things don't go right for Michael Forrest, uh, he, he needs to get his stuff together to get through it. I, I think it's very realistic. I think that uh, I think it's going to be a lot more magical and more awesome than just microbes and, and, and viruses or bacteria or, or multi-cell organisms. I think that there's going to be stuff on Europa that is is bigger and greater than any human has ever imagined. Uh, and as Arthur C. Clarke once said, when we discover life, uh, alien life forms, it will be it's more complicated than we can even begin to imagine. So I think that, uh, I, I think that uh, the, real, the reality of life on Europa is very, very, very possible. And I just think that uh, we gotta go find that out for ourselves. That's a great question. Um, in many ways, uh, the story of Astronaut The Last Push could be an allegory for anything. It could be an allegory for the struggle it takes to make a movie. It could be uh, an allegory for, you know, trying to get, you know, a job to, uh, to, to feed your family during these bad economic times. And the, the reality is that all of us face these, what seem to be impossible mountains to overcome. But when you choose to stop fighting the problem, and you choose to accept the hand of cards that you're dealt and, and, and look at them and play them in a, the most strategic way that you can, that's when you start winning at life. And I think that the main point here is never give up and never forget the, the heart of who you are and what you're trying to, to grasp. And no matter how many obstacles are in your way and how impossible it seems, uh, to be able to achieve that goal, if you look at the tools that you have before you and don't fight the problem, but work around it and work through it, that's how we win. And, and, and that's, you know, that's, that's, that was, that's why we made the movie.